There are so many strange and logically inexplicable disappearances of people in national parks in the United States that a huge number of books have been published on this topic. It would seem that these parks are passed along and across by thousands of tourists, but people continue to disappear on these trails, and their bodies are never found. One of these mysterious disappearances occurred in 1998, just three weeks before Christmas. Robert Engebertson, along with his father and eight-year-old son Derek, went on December 5th to the Wanima National Forest in Oregon. There was a long-standing annual tradition in the Engebertson family that men would go to this forest to find and cut down a tree for the Christmas celebration. All the local trails were known to them, they did not go far into the forest, so no one expected what happened next. For tree Engebertson arrived at the wooded slope of the mountain, Pelican Butte, which is near the upper Klamath Lake, south of the neighboring national park, Crater Lake. Robert went further into the woods, while his son Derek stayed with his grandfather near their car. After a while, Robert lingered, looking for a suitable fir tree, and the boy missed his father and told his grandfather to go to meet him. The grandfather agreed, and when they moved, the boy ran forward and quickly disappeared from sight. His grandfather was not worried about his grandson, Robert was not far away, and the boy was wearing a warm winter suit of bright blue. You could always spot him on the white snow if he went too far. It took 40 minutes, and the boy's grandfather reached Robert, who was just chopping the selected spruce. He was surprised when he didn't see Derek next to Robert, and asked where he was. To this Robert replied that he had not seen his son since he had gone in search of a fir tree. At first they both thought that the boy was just distracted by something in the woods and would soon come to them. But minutes passed, and the child did not appear. Even then, men were nervous, just waiting. It wasn't the first time Derek had gone with them to the woods and camping trips in general, and he was a bright boy. Derek knew which berries and mushrooms to eat in the woods and which ones not, and he loved being in the woods so much that his family often called him Bear Boy. However, an hour later the boy did not come, and then Robert and his father went to look for him, shouting and looking for his tracks in the snow. They found his tracks, which led in a wide circle back to the highway where their car was parked, but then they found the boy's tracks on the other side of the highway, and now went far into the woods. Why did he go there? Along the way, they came across fresh notches from an axe on the tree trunks for a while, obviously made by Derek with his small hatchet, he knew that you need to make notches, so as not to get lost in the woods. Then the man suddenly came across a large print in the snow, where Derek was making a snow angel. And then his tracks suddenly disappeared. By that time it was quite dark, and Robert called the police, telling them that his son was lost in the woods. The police immediately flew out in a helicopter, and began to inspect the area from the air, focusing on the bright blue suit of the child. And on the ground, the boy was being searched for by a team of service dogs that had been sent on Derek's trail. For some time the dogs followed the trail exactly, leading the police to a tree, near which they found spruce branches, from which they seemed to be trying to make a shelter or shelter from the wind. It was assumed that Derek was trying to make a shelter for himself. However, then the dogs began to wander, they lost track of the boy. In the diagram below, the red dotted line is Derek's footprints. The oval is where their car was parked. The yellow dotted line is the footprints of his father, Robert, and the blue dotted line is the footprints of Derek's grandfather. The white square is where Derek was supposed to go where his father cut spruce, and where Derek's grandfather later went. The green square is where my grandfather last saw Derek. The white cross is where Derek made the snow angel. Red cross where Derek's tracks disappeared. A couple of hours later, a heavy snowstorm began and destroyed all traces of the child that were visible in the snow. Only a few days later the snowstorm subsided and the search was decided to continue, hoping that by some miracle the boy could still be alive by then. With the help of a group of volunteers who searched the forest, they managed to find a fresh wrapper from a candy and a piece of paper from a book textbook from the school where Derek studied. However, these were clues that could not be linked directly to the missing boy. Then the search party came across strange spots on the snow, like bloodstains, and then someone came across a hole in the ice on the lake, not far from the shore. There was a theory that the boy could have fallen through the ice, but when the divers carefully checked the site, they found nothing. On December 18th, the search for the child was officially terminated due to deteriorating weather conditions. By then, even his family had no hope that Derek might still be alive, but they wanted to at least find his body. 
A survey of likely eyewitnesses at first gave only one clue. Someone claimed that during the hours of the child's disappearance, he saw a black Honda car in the area, driven by a man he did not know. Later, another eyewitness was found who allegedly saw a similar description of a boy in a blue suit next to an adult man, and they behaved as they walked along the road, as if the boy was very offended by the adult or very scared. However, none of this gave the police any leads, and they still could not even decide whether the boy was really kidnapped, or if he was still lost in the woods. The following year, in September 1999, a drawing was found on a rock in the same forest, which was allegedly made by a missing child, but the authorities did not tell what the drawing was, and the rumor itself was declared a fake. In 2002, the Engebretson family received a letter from an unnamed inmate who told them that he knew who had kidnapped their son. It was allegedly done by a former cellmate named Frank Milligan, who was serving time in prison for raping a 10-year-old boy. When the police questioned Milligan, he initially admitted that, yes, he had killed Derek and hidden his body in the woods at the location he had indicated. However, when the police found this place and dug everything up, the remains of the child were not found. When they questioned Milligan again, he said that he had lied to them, and that he had not killed Derek. So another thread was lost. Since then, there has been no further news on the case of the missing Derek Engebretson. The Vineham National Forest has been searched up and down over the years, and no evidence has been found in the case, not even scraps of a blue suit. Subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss more videos of mysterious stories and photos. Check out this playlist and I'll see you in the next video.